We're good. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you folks uh, being empathetic and doing the mask thing or the distancing. I hate this, but I'm uh, trying to be careful. Uh, let's do the roll call then. Meeting's called to order, by the way. Uh, Susan Bill. Present. Hi, Susan. Dave Kleinfelter is here. Daniel Elliott, not here. Martha Helgerson, not here. Julie Hughes. Jan Jacobson. Here. Hi, Jan. Patrick. Yo. Nice to have you. Pat or Jack. Oh, sorry. Hi, Jack and Nancy. Present. Good. All present and accounted for. So the first item is uh, petitions, proclamations, suggestions, or complaints. Anything that you folks want to bring up that maybe you've heard from citizens or issues to discuss? If not, then we'll turn to our uh, staff member. Any updates or information from the city? Um, first, I just want to let you guys know that Council Chambers has new artwork you could see behind you. Um, this is a rotating exhibit that we do um, bi-monthly. So every other month you'll come in here and we have new artwork on display. So just wanted to point that out. We also have a few events wrapping up as summer is ending, sadly. Uh, the first is the Victoria's Farmer's Market that's still going on every Thursday. It, the Anki Brewing parking lot, Thursday is 3 to 6. The last one will be September 16th. Um, the next is Concerts in the Park, which is a series held every summer. It's every Wednesday, 5 to 8, at the band shell behind City Hall here. And that last one will be August 11th. Um, another thing to note is we have Night to Unite this week, actually tomorrow. Uh, that's throughout the community. What uh, the city does for that is... Uh, parties around the neighborhoods can sign up with the city and then we will have the fire department come out and visit those neighborhoods for a few minutes um, the sheriff's department the council members and then some members of city staff go out and visit those parties so that's occurring tomorrow we also have the classic car night still going on this summer every second and fourth and i spelled fourth wrong on the powerpoint my apologies uh, <laughs> wednesdays until september so those are wrapping up too and then uh, last but not least, we have the Victoria Fire Department Recruitment Open House uh, September 1st at 7 p.m. So if you know anyone that would be interested in being a volunteer firefighter with the city, um, let them know. The open house is a great way to find more information and just see what the fire department's about. But with that, I have nothing else. Any questions for Alyssa? I do have one thing last. Thursday evening, and I don't know if you can pass this on. I did thank Holly and Ann, but they had their truck night um, behind city or behind the rec center, and it was wonderful. They had four fire trucks. They had the pub or um, the parks department, public works had all their vehicles. It was for young kids, but there were a lot of um, older adults with their grandchildren. It was they just did a great, great job. So. I don't know if you can pass that on and let them know that myself and my four grandchildren really appreciated it. Love it. And just so the committee's aware, and I'll definitely pass that along, it's actually, I, I, I was there, I thought it was a fantastic event. Mm -hmm. um, it's a truck rodeo, so what we do is we bring a bunch of different type of vehicles that are used in the city, like you said, fire trucks, we had an ambulance, um, we had a lot of the public works vehicles, the snow plows, the diggers, you know, the lawnmower, like whatever the public works uses out that the kids could touch, they could climb in, they could interact with, um, and it's just a really easy, simple event, and kids enjoy it, and it also gets them kind of experienced with this equipment that they see on a day-to-day -day basis. And the city. staff, I mean, the public works staff, the fire department, the paramedics from Ridgeview, I mean, they were all so friendly, and it was, it, it was wonderful. They did, everyone did a great job. Thank you. I will definitely pass it on. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We need a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Anybody would like to make that motion? I make a motion that we approve minutes from the Monday, July 7th meeting. Thank you, Susan. Is there a second? I'll second that. Nancy, thank you. Moved and seconded. Any comments, discussions, corrections? If not, we'll put the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, 
same side. Motion carries. We're down to <coughs> business. Melissa, I don't think we have anything at this point, do we? We do not. All it's right. a little young for a. <laughs> so the for first old agenda business. item is uh, Carver County Public Health Representative Don Plumer. Is Don with us or is she? She is not. Um, also, due to the COVID 19 upspur, she has chosen to <clears throat> not attend this meeting and hopes to attend um, in September. Okay. So, just FYI, mm -hmm. move it to the next. Yep. Agenda meeting or the meeting agenda. 6.2 then, rescheduling our September 8th meeting because Alyssa won't be here. Yes, I will not be at the, the scheduled September 8th meeting. I actually will be um, at my honeymoon. I'm getting married at the end of the month, so Whoa, I will not uh, be there. Where are your priorities, woman? Yeah. I know. My gosh, I can't believe you put that ahead of this meeting. But it's all right, we understand. Oh. Well, I'm hoping you'll take a pass, but I would still like to have this meeting. Um, and I was looking at dates that we could reschedule. Just one I threw out there would be the following Monday, going back to that Monday schedule. Um, I have a conflict. Um, I couldn't, if we could meet at nine o'clock that day, I could do it. I'm playing in a Blessing House golf tournament that begins at 11 on the 13th, but if it were at nine, I don't know if that's, if you've been gone a week, that might be pretty early or, or I mean, we could look at another day, but that would be a conflict for me at 10. Nine o'clock would work. Um, Nine's better for me too. We can, is that it's work good, for the rest of the group? Good to understand your priorities. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of town on the, uh, on the, uh, that day. Is there any other availabilities for the group? I would be available on the 10th, a Wednesday. Would that work for? Let's take a poll and see who's available on the 8th. Oh, actually, it was on the 8th, and it's switching to the 13th. 13th. Or potentially. Yes. yes. From the, it was scheduled for a Tuesday, right? It was scheduled for Wednesday, the 8th, yeah. Okay. Is there anybody else that cannot be here on the 15th? The 13th. Jeez. That's the Monday, the I'm following gonna, Monday. I think maybe I have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it is Monday. On the 13th. At the moment, I have no idea. Okay. If everybody can come yeah. except me, I'd say go ahead and do it. I'm, I'm just wondering if we, with the resource expo, would that be a meeting we'd like to try to have everyone at? Uh, if not, the 13th would work. Uh, so I was planning on having some discussion with the Resource Expo, seeing uh, potential volunteer opportunities that the group would want to participate in. Um, so potentially, yeah, we would talk about that. Yep. But uh, Chair, I can definitely fill you in as well. Sure. Okay. I think we ought to try to keep the Monday schedule as often as possible at the very least. So an hour. best option to stay in the habit so do we need a motion Alyssa we, we will um, just to confirm that September 13th at 9 a.m. works for a majority of the group uh, yes and we would need a, a motion change. yes yeah, so we still have three people not here right that we don't Correct. know about yep. that would give us a quorum if, every, if everybody here five of us yep. all right yeah, but you motion. won't be here is four enough for a quorum because Patrick, Patrick does, Patrick's but, a member of the committee. Oh, he is. So he, yeah. okay, perfect. We have five without me, and hopefully one of the other, a couple of the other three that aren't here today to get past the summer vacation. Would somebody make a motion then to, to move our next meeting? I'll make a motion that we meet September 13th at 9 a.m. for our regular meeting. Thank you, Tina. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Patrick. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Since we were talking without a motion on the table. <laughs> uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're good to go on the 13th at 9 a.m. Awesome. Thank all you right. all for um, being flexible on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to turn to 
Lisa now to introduce Patrick. Yeah, so the next topic, uh, Patrick here with us has been so kind to uh, talk a little bit about what um, services that the Carver County Library um, offers for kind of the adult learning section. So Patrick, I will pass it along to you. The other, actually one thing I want to note is on the back of the agenda is a handout that Patrick provided for us. So just an FYI. So I'll be very brief and not read to you because I'm assuming we all know how to read. Um, so why don't you take a moment and just look at the handout if you haven't, and then I'll highlight a couple things and then answer some questions. I've divided this up kind of in the three big things that how we divide up work in a library, which is what are our collections, what's the stuff that you can take out or use. It's not always take out. Um, what kind of services do we provide? And finally, what kinds of um, extra things we do, which we call programs or events. Um, the things I thought you might be most interested in in collections um, and my, that seniors might be most interested in are the Lucky Day Collection because that's sponsored by the Friends of the Library. The idea there is you can find a best-selling book. It may have 100 people waiting for it, but if you walk in and look at this collection, there's books without reserves on them, so it's your lucky day, and you get one. Oh. Uh, and it's all funded by the Friends of the Victoria Library, um, so it's a really neat program. It's, it's available at all the libraries, but the Victoria Friends are particularly generous with providing um, money for that. Um, many seniors, certainly not all, but uh, I have a lot of experience working with seniors in, in my position at Hennepin County Library, and about 60 to 70 percent of the seniors I worked with would only, or could only, or would only read large print books. So while there's a small collection in Victoria, the thing always to remember is you have access not just to what's available at the Victoria Library, but you have access to everything in Carver County, and actually, you have access to anything in the state of Minnesota. So if you want a particular book in large print and if it's been published and we didn't buy it, then we look for a metro area library that did. And if no one bought it in the metro, then we find someone in the state that did. On Saturday, I worked at Chanhassen, and I borrowed something from the Arrowhead Public Library, um, the Arrowhead Regional Library, whatever one of their libraries had the book. Then the last thing I wanted to point out in collections was you don't even have to come into the library to read, listen. Um, there's a, a uh, app called Overdrive, or a company called Overdrive that has an app called Libby. Are any of you familiar with Libby? Right. Have any of you used that? Okay. So can you speak to the genius of Libby at all? Or have you used it recently? I have. I just got an ebook on it. It's wonderful. Of course, you have to have a device yeah. um, to have it on. Um, initially, it was a little hard to set up, but now your new transition is mm -hmm. very easy, and um, you can reserve a book when it becomes available. It's there. I think you get it for three weeks, and um, it's wonderful. So. And the great thing about the Libby collection is similar, is if Carver County didn't buy it, it's a consortium, so if any library in the metro bought it, we have a copy of it, so you get access to it. The thing that most people don't understand about ebooks, because they think of anything electronic as something everyone can access at the same time. If you go to YouTube to look at a video, a million people could be looking at the same video at the same time. Ebooks are not like that. We have to buy each ebook. So it's like buying books. There's one person can read it at a time. Um, so in addition to ebooks, there's also e audiobooks, which a lot of people really like. They like to listen to books. And the great thing about both of these products is you can um, change them. So if you want to make the font bigger on the um, uh, e-books, you can do that. If on the e-audiobooks, if you want to make it louder, you can do that on your device. But you can also even slow down the speed of the person reading it if they're talking too fast. You cannot take out the British accent, though. That's <laughs> Patrick, do you do like, tutorials on how to use the audiobooks or how to, to connect to it? We, we do. Like to use it, sure. What we have found is what works best is just doing one-on-one, -on -one, is come into Chan Hassan or Victoria, bring your device with you, and say, I want to get set up on Libby, and I can walk you through it in five minutes. 
the hardest thing, is, as Sue was saying, is the initial setup is a little, con not confusing, it's, it's like four, four steps. If I bring my phone, you can. Yep, bring your phone in and I can show you how to do it. We open at one today. If I'm not, th I'm not there today, but Kristen is and she can show you how to do it. All you need is internet access, which we have downstairs. Yeah. Um, and a good collection of audio books. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Really? It's huge. And the great thing you can do is if you only want audio books is you can do when you do your search. So let's say you want James Patterson, for example, right. is you can say, just show me audio books and just show me what's available now. I don't want to wait. I only want to have an audio book by Patterson that I can get today. Okay. So you can use these filters, or you could say, and, I, and Patterson, you'd say, I only want his adult books, because probably you don't want his picture book, because um, he writes for everything. James Patterson writes a book a day, I think. <laughs> uh, he's up to now. Um, so yeah, just we, when we um, first offered Libby, I guess, um, or, or Overdrive, it was called then, they used to do some workshops, and people just didn't show up. It's more, and also what we found in doing technology workshops is it's really difficult because you get five people who are at five different knowledge areas. Some people, it's like back when I used to do training, is some people I'd have to show how to click a mouse, and the people already knew that stuff are so far ahead, that the other person gets behind and really frustrated. Um, so technology classes, we kind of moved away from those and, and try to spend the time one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, Eric, are you saying L-I-B-B-Y? I'm sorry? Libby. Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Thank you. Yes. Um, that's the name of the app, mm -hmm. and the name of the company is Overdrive. The other thing they offer is, is access to uh, electronic magazines. Uh, which I use a lot. I, use, I read a lot of uh, sports magazines. I read my hockey news um, online, uh, a couple other magazines as well. And it's the same thing. You just go in, search the name of the magazine, most current issue comes up, and you can just flip through the pages. Um, and services, the three things I wanted to point out are we do have internet access. So if you know people who don't have internet access, they may not. They may not want to pay for it. They could not afford it. Uh, maybe they don't have a computer, they can come in and we have um, internet access if you have a wireless device, or we have seven computers down there that provide internet access. Um, as, as I just mentioned, we'll offer you one-on-one -on -one help if you um, bring in and you want to learn how to use Libby, we will show you how to do that. So we offer one-on-one -on -one help. The really cool thing we have is what we're finding, lots of people um, have computers, but they don't have printers anymore. Is for whatever reason, their printer doesn't work, it doesn't want to replace it, they only print three things a year. <laughs> you can actually, from home, use, a, use an app called, or a website called Printer On and send the print job from home to the library and retrieve it. Or if you bring in your phone, you got some pictures on your phone you want to print, come into the library, use this device, use this app called Printer On and you can print out your pictures or your boarding pass, whatever it is you want to print. Um, right on our computers for 15 cents a page. Uh, programming is, we're really in a middle area here. We're doing hybrid programming, which may change. Right now, we're going back to in-person programming for children's story times. Uh, we always have a great turnout of parents and grandparents. Um, we do two story times, Mondays at 10.30 and Wednesdays at 10.30. Um, and again, we have a nice turnout of grandparents, so if you live in the same uh, community as your grandchild or want to bring them to a story time here at Victoria, Kristen does a great story time. We do five things. Hopefully I remember them during story time. We play, so there's usually some sort of playing that the kids do during a book. We read, we talk, we write, we like draw letters. And except when I do it, we sing. I was when, when, when I'm doing story time, there's not as much singing going on. There's usually a CD playing and me mouthing the words, because it's not pretty, people. It's just not good. Um, <laughs> uh, we authored lots of author visits. All of those this year will be done virtually. Um, and so if, uh, a lot of people, especially if you like to write, want to hear how authors actually write. So usually people come, they'll tell the story of their most current book, read a little bit from it. And when we go back to doing this in person, they'll also have books to sell. The other kind of programming we do, which we're going to do in person, and there's one here, I don't have the date because it hasn't been confirmed yet. We do arts programming, we hire a company called Artistry in Bloomington, and they will come in and they teach a class, and we usually allow 
10 to 15 people to attend those classes. Um, they've done ones on doing stained glass, on doing pottery, uh, on painting, um, and we'll be using actually the city council chambers for that because we can't fit 15 people downstairs. The other two things I just want to mention, and I'll take any questions you have, um, we have a pretty active Friends of the Library group. Unlike most Friends of the Library group, the ones at Victoria, they decided there's no membership fee. So if you just want to come to a meeting, you can certainly come to a meeting. The next one is Tuesday, August 17th at 6 o'clock. Um, we have limited at Victoria, we do have limited volunteer opportunities. We are in a union environment. Um, so we need to be very careful about what we get volunteers to do um, in our libraries. And just at Victoria, we just don't have as many projects. The teens this summer at Chanhassen like put together a thousand kits uh, because we've been handing out kits all summer to go with our story times. Um, and we just don't have in that kind of opportunity at Victoria. So if you do want to volunteer at the library, Chan Hassan would probably be the library you'd volunteer at. So that is just a quick smattering of what we do. Um, but I wanted to give people an opportunity to ask questions um, or make comments about your experience using a library or anything you think I should hear about what we should do better. Well, I've got three of them. Go. I like anyone who talks in threes. I wonder if you want to add under your collection your book kits there yep. or your book bags they have bags that have 10 books in it for book clubs yep. they're wonderful um a great variety i know our book club and we've used them a lot um the other thing with this printer on yep. um on your home page do you ever have do you ever highlight that service i mean when i go to your the Victor, I mean, I usually go to reserve a book or yeah. look at events, but I, I must admit I'm kind of guilty. I don't read all of it, but could you highlight some of that on, you're not on, on your homepage or, you know, when you send out your emails? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll tell Susan Bernstein, who actually is the, the new librarian down here, in her next email to maybe do just a technology reminder of all the technology we offer people and make sure that printer on is one of the things that's mentioned. It's on the web page, but again, you got, it's one of those things you have to you put too, you guys know this, you put too much stuff on the front page of a web page, it overwhelms it, no one reads exactly. it. If you put too little, like we, it's not we put too little, but it's like headings, like you have to go, oh, what would be a service? Oh, remote printing. Um, so yeah, I think featuring it in our, uh, we offer a once a month newsletter you can sign up for. I think that's a great idea. And then lastly, a compliment. I've been to a number of classes, both in um, Chanhassen. I've gone to a few in Victoria, and I did a few of the virtual art classes, and they're wonderful. So, and you just sign up if they're real popular ones, they fill up, yep. but, um, and they're free. Um, aren't they? most everything, everything, everything we do is, is free, free unless you don't return a book, then it's not free. Yeah. So anyway, they're wonderful. So um, those are on the library events, and you search by date, and they're they're wonderful. So, there's also thank a you. brochure that lists programs. I didn't bring one today because there's no more adult programs left this summer, and I don't have the fall brochure. It won't come out until probably the uh, time of the county fair. Mm -hmm. But okay. yeah, you can search events online. You can just search. You can go in and say, "Show me what's at Victoria," and it'll list all the events at Victoria. You got to go dig through all the story times to find the adult stuff, mm -hmm. um, or you can look at this events catalog that comes out three times, four times a year. Three, four doesn't matter. I think they did a Thursday night art, and didn't they have a cooking for a while? I mean, yeah, and they're they're wonderful. So yeah, well, that was cooking with Jody and her daughter and her dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would not involve a dog in my cooking, but but yeah. Duke was somehow involved, and I didn't question it. Yeah. Oh, and, and then Marin, who's the adult librarian at uh, Chanhassen, did a uh, craft thing because she's yeah. an artist. And Susan Bernstein downstairs did a series called um, What to Read Next. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we're going to continue those in the fall because those were very much, there was not that much going on in the library. So we're trying to push all of this content out virtually. And it all goes through our Facebook page. Anyway. Where's the best place to find out about this? Subscribe to the newsletter? I think subscribing to the newsletter is great. 
And uh, again, you can do that right off the front page or is my email, I didn't put it on here, did I? Yeah, my email's down here, send me an email and I can sign you up. Okay. And then as, as, Sue, as Sue was mentioning, you can also go to our homepage and it says events and you can just search by Victoria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go. Yeah, I just want to say uh, I live in the condos right over here, and uh, one of the other ladies moved in and was so pleased that we had a library here. She came down and said, there aren't any books. <laughs> and she's as old as I am or close to it and thought she could walk in and, you know, go to the shelves. And uh, you've told us lots of things, and it kind of goes over my head, too. How do we somehow make unaware people realize you can come in and get help and do it comfortably and you know what I'm asking? Yes. Um, we always highlight a couple things and remind people we're around in the Victoria Gazette newspaper. <laughs> we have a monthly column there. Mm -hmm. um, but I was at the farmer's market and a number of people came up to me and said, I didn't know you were open yet. And, and, and I wanted to say, it's like, was I supposed to call you personally? You know. It was in the Victoria Gazette. It was in um, uh, the Chan and Chan, Chan Villager. We sent an we sent an email to everybody, but still, people don't know. The other, you know, I want to address that comment briefly. The thing that people really need to understand about Victoria Library is when it was built, it was supposed to be this technology hub with a small collection, and people were going to flock here with all their technology issues. Didn't happen. Just for whatever reason, I think this community, people are pretty tech savvy or have kids who are tech savvy who fix their tech problems for them. So the adult collection is fairly small here. The 70% of the circulation of books, what goes out of the library is children's materials. It's a very children-friendly library. What I think people have to remember is Victoria is one of, of six libraries. So you don't need to drive to Chanhassen. She can come in here. And she say, well, you don't have any books. It's like, yeah, but I can get it for you the next day. Um, or she could call and say, I want, I want the new Joanne Fluke book. And we'll put her on a list. Or I want three books on pottery. And we'll call Chan Hassan and say, send me three good books on pottery over, and she'll have them the next day. Good. If a person is used to a big, robust library, like if they moved in from the cities and they're used to like Ridgedale, they're just not going to find that. We're, we're somewhere around St. Bonnie and Excelsior in size. But that is going to change. And the five-year plan for the city is for the city to move downstairs, correct? We're actually looking at a, 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 mid, a short, mid, and long-term space facilities plan. So where that falls in the yeah. five to 40 years, it's not quite set yet. But eventually, yeah, that will be something of consideration is um, moving downstairs and then finding a, a larger space for the library somewhere else. And I think when that happens, we will rethink the services again, realize this is not a community that, that in the past has shown the rabid interest in technology. And we also did lots of technology classes for kids. When we opened, everyone was full, and we stopped doing them because by the time we had 3D printers, that was the big attraction, every school is a 3D printer now. And they take 3D printing classes, so it used to be tricky. So I think when we build a new library, we need to build a bigger adult collection. Um, and we need to build a, a, a collection that's more robust, that has more audio books, more large print. Um, so there's a wider selection of people. So they don't need to drive to Waconia or Chanhassen. Yeah, go. Sure. Uh, a plug or endorsement. I've brought my grandson a number of times to the to the book uh, session, children's session. They're terrific. He loves them. Yeah. You know? And uh, so if you have grandkids visiting or whatever, it's a nice opportunity. Uh, I do have a just a kind of a concern. I find the website really difficult to okay. use. Okay. The print's small, and it's not what I call a user-friendly website. I, you know, I could, can't remember the last time I was there, but I had trouble remembering. If I checked this book out, where was it? It went on. It was just difficult to use it. Well, depending on how long ago you use the catalog, in December we upgraded to a new library system. Oh, really? Um, before that. Okay, yeah. And the old library system basically was 
there was a box and you typed in the box and that was it. Right. You couldn't do a whole lot more. Now, I'm gonna go back to the James Patterson example. You can type in James Patterson and say, show me only books, show me only large print books, show me only large print books on the shelf at Victoria okay. that you couldn't do in the old system. I'll give it another visit. Yeah. I can attest to that. Your old system was not as user friendly as now for looking up and reserving. Yeah, and reserving is so much easier. Before yeah. you had this little little check box. You're talking about the little thing, a little check box right here now. It has a big box that says hold. Mm -hmm. so it's very clear. Go. Uh, this website, carverlib.org. Yes. Uh, so I would go there. And then I would have to select between Chanhassen and Victoria and then go into the collection. No, no. You, you go in, you put in the, the, the book you want, you put a hold on it, and then it's going to say, where do you want this book at? Well, what if I don't know? I just want to see what's in large print. I just want to sure. see what's in the Lucky Day collection. I'm just perusing. Yeah. So would I, so would I select Chen Hass? And then if I want to see what's over there? Yes. So, so you bring up the list of books. You say, I only want large print. And then one of the other things you can choose from is which library. Yeah. Oh, OK. And you can, do, and you can also put Chen Hass. And you can also, again, say, tell me what's available now. Yeah. I don't want to put anything on hold. I want to know if I go to Chan Hassan today, I can find six Robert Parker books. Okay. Yeah, I just want to know if I can go into these various areas and just search them out. Yeah. Okay. The one thing you can't do, lucky day books are not in the public catalog oh. because we don't want people reserving them because there's no way to reserve them. Right. So the only way to get lucky day books is to walk into the library. Yeah. Okay. And right now, lucky day is only regular print. Okay. We, we had a few large print, and it just confused people. It's like, okay. why, why are these large print here and not other places? So, right. yeah. Well, here's my three takeaways from this. When I redo this, next time I do it for the senior fair, add book club kits. Um, go take a look at the in our newsletter of putting a section on technology with printer on. And my third takeaway was if people want to email me with more questions or to get added to the newsletter or anything like that, is just know that I might hear from some of you. Great. Patrick, thank you. Thank Great you, library. It is, it is a fantastic library system. I've worked at three, and I love this one. Just an observation. I'm looking at my we're scheduled September 13th at 10 a.m. on the 13th, or is it 9? 9 a.m. Yeah. It says 10 here on my... That, that was the one that was already... A Okay, that's been changed. Okay, wasn't okay, got it. Right. All right. You change it on the yeah. flyer. Is it? I can. We're going to challenge the technology. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> See where I am? <laughs> Good. Well, I thank you very much for your time and listening and your great questions and suggestions. And I look forward to doing the senior fair. And at the senior fair, that's one of the things we talked about is like every 15 minutes, I'm going to have two people there. I'll be one, and I'll probably ask one of our technology associates to come. And like say at 10, 10, 15, come and learn how to use OverDrive, or come and learn how to use one of these databases. And then, because they have wireless out there, you said, right? We do have wireless. Fantastic. Yep. If you've got wireless, I can do anything. I walk around, I, I keep my phone with me when I'm on the desk, and someone will say, well, how do you use that Libby? I'm going to say, I'm going to show you right now. I show them how to download it, and then I show them how to install it, and then how to search. Very good. We got two other items. Let's move on then to item 6.4. Oh, excuse me. Um, one other thing, Patrick. Yeah, um, you have the memory maker kits at the yeah. Chan Library. I don't, I mean, I'm thinking the Chan Library a number of years ago developed these memory maker kits for people or family members that might have a dementia or Alzheimer's, and there are kits that you can check out that help stimulate and work with your memory. Um, I don't know if that's worth a mention. Yeah. So. I was just desperate to get everything on one page. Okay. <laughs> but no, no, you're absolutely right. That was a really good project. Mm -hmm. um, we've not added to that because it was a grant. Right. Um, and so a lot of the kits, people returned them and didn't put everything back oh. in them. And the grant didn't build in money to replace things. So like there's a puzzle. Um, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but really replacing a $12 puzzle 
takes about $15 of staff time to do. Yeah. So as a lot of these kits are coming back, we're not. We just got new. Another kit we have is we have, for young people, we have STEM kits. Oh. Uh, we went on plants. I don't remember what the other ones are offhand. So this idea of a kit is a really good idea. Excuse me. No more interruptions for me. <laughs> okay, Alyssa, we'll move on to 6.4 about the uh, resource expo. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update on the Senior Resource Expo. So we do have it scheduled for October 12th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lions Pavilion um, in Victoria. We can get about 16, 17, 18 um, booths in there. Um, right now, we have 12 vendors that have signed up, still working with a few, um, still reaching out to see what we can get um, for vendors. We have, and I, I'm not gonna be able to list all of them for you, but um, just uh, just kind of as a few of them that I can remember offhand. We have WeCab that will be there. We have um, Southwest Transit will be there. They're even talking about bringing one of their prime buses, yeah, to park out front so people can experience and, and know what services they offer. Uh, obviously, we have a space reserved for the Senior Advisory Committee. We have Carver County Public Health participating. Uh, as Patrick mentioned, the library will be there. Uh, we're also having um, another group from the Health Department over at the Carver County Library going to be there um, working with Mac and Tunes Grocery. Um, to have them come and talk about their delivery services as well as uh, their nutritional and dietitian um, office that they have available. Um, and then a hearing group uh, is currently kind of our group that we have right now. So, still working. If there's anyone that you'd really like to see at the fair and you'd like me to reach out to, um, feel free to let me know and I can give them a shout. Happy Do you think... Go ahead. Do you think we should have an ice cream stand there? In October, it might be a little chilly. It might be chilly. Um, food always goes over well. I don't know what we could be. We can talk to see if we want to do um, some sort of food truck. A what? A food truck. We can see oh, if yeah. that. Um, yeah, we could have one come by. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they usually um, either require a certain number of attendees or um, just make sure that they uh, they receive so much income, but we can definitely reach out and see if that's something of interest for mm -hmm. a group like that. Yeah, there's a truck that does these little mini donuts, which are really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, there's various ones. We could probably search out something because a little food usually helps. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great can idea. You, can, can you get us a list of the... the people that are scheduled yeah, and I can not necessarily right now but just send it to us in the minutes maybe yeah I can do that mm-hmm yeah. did you say we cab was coming yeah and I'll just pull up this is kind of small but just actually <clears throat> also uh, what could we have at our table that we could give away as freebies? There we go. Is there anything that we could hand out? Yeah, so um, just to go for the first question here, we have the rec center, city of Victoria, obviously, um, the fire department, we cab trellis, which um, does the senior linkage line. Carver County Public Health, Adult Protection, and then Bethesda, the Library, Mac and Tunes, um, a hearing group, and then Southwest Transit. Those ones on the bottom, the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, have been confirmed, haven't received an application yet. Would, would we want to have some aspect of Ridgeview? Um, we have reached out to Ridgeview um, to see if they would be of interest in okay. participating. Yes, Ridge, that's a great question. Ridgeview or Ridgeview Home Health? or mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to think about the, the information you shared with us about the AARP categories and so forth. Did, we, did you use something like that to identify services in each of those areas, like housing and safety and so forth? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get a wide scope of vendors to truly try and hit, you know, all the markets, of course, but wanting to keep it local, too. I want to make sure, sure that it's sure. things that people can actually access in the area um, and not, you know, something that's just primarily online or something that's, you know, a little bit farther of a drive. But, yeah. yeah. And I've also reached out to AARP Minnesota. Um, they're not 100% sure if they want to participate or not, depending on scheduling and timing, but they're going to let us know by the end of the month. So. So you're going to a lot of work to identify these people, contact them, and so forth, get the space set up. Do you have a marketing plan or an advertising plan that you share so we can get a lot of people there? Great question. Um, we are working with our communications uh, manager, Kendra, on developing uh, a marketing plan. Uh, I know she's been quite busy with all the other activities in the city, but um, we're having a few meetings um, this week and next week on developing exactly what we want for a marketing plan. We're also going to be in the fall uh, Victoria Recreation Program and then um, some digital uh, Victoria spirits. So. Good. Uh, when I was working on senior citizen housing, um, I, com I communicated with the Community Action Partnership, is CAP there for Carver, Dakota, and Scott. Mm -hmm. And they sent me the Senior Housing Guide and Resources for the Twin Cities. It's really a nice book. Now, I got this for free, but there is the publishers in St. Paul. I wonder if they would give us, you know, uh, a number of copies just to hand for people who would might mm -hmm. be interested in taking one. That's a great idea. I, yeah, um, and that's something we could put on our table if that would be interest. I did reach out to the CAP to see if they'd want to participate in being a vendor. Um, so hopefully they will engage and maybe they'll provide that themselves too. I think those books come, can I look at that please? I sure. think they come from the MAAA, Minnesota mm -hmm. Area Agency on Aging and the Senior Linkage Line. Um, that would be trellis now. You, these are free, and at the end of the year, they're giving them away because they print a lot of them. Mm -hmm. so, and so those you are they wonderful. Give us a bunch to hand out. Hopefully, if they, yeah. you know, a lot of places have cut down on print because so much yeah. is online. But, but this, this is really nice. Uh, she gave me the publisher, and then the woman I got it from sent it herself. She was with the agency. So uh, I'll give this to you if you want to see it. Yeah, and I would love to reach out to see if we can receive the okay. copies too. Yeah. Another question in terms of communication. I'm thinking about different businesses that I know of here in the community. <clears throat> Have you like, done some kind of invitation to all the, the business community to say, would you like to have a... I'm thinking of a chiropractor that I go to might want to be here, you know, but... How do they know about it and how do they sign up? Are you kind of working off a select list? Here's the folks we're going to invite yeah. because there's limited space. That's kind of the direction we're, we're going down, Chair, just with the limited space, just trying to keep it very focused and very defined. If we are looking for, you know, let's say we're stuck at 12 and we want to fill up those four to six booths, then we would do kind of more of a, a blast out to the yeah. local businesses and see who would want to participate. Excuse me, have we reached, is it Emerald Crest or on um, the memory care right behind the high school? Um, have have we reached out to them? I mean, they're kind of the only memory care in the area, plus they're, they have locations in a variety of different places. Yeah. And they um, used to be great community partners. And that would be a great one. I'll add that to my list. Okay. And if not all the businesses, then maybe the Victoria Business Association, mm -hmm. you know, might want to have a booth, have a couple of their people staff with a list of all of with a list of all of their members, and maybe those members, like you know, I don't know if your chiropractor is a member of that. I know the guy who runs the business association I've been in contact with is a chiropractor. You know, might have business cards or something like that. Yeah, that's a great idea as well. I'll reach out. It's actually Nate. He's our our neighbor next door. So. <laughs> see if they'd have some interest. I think that I forwarded, and I think maybe Julie might have forwarded to uh, the name of a woman. She is a real estate agent, but she does a class or she goes and helps individuals uh, decide how to start sorting and downsizing 
and what to do first and how to how to you know go through it without making it traumatic and she she said she would be glad to come and and um, you know just present what she would be able to offer if, if there's people that are interested apparently she does have people that have have her help them you know where do I start what do, you know that kind of thing yeah, on the, we talked about all the booths. How about the presenters? Do you have people lined up that are going to be on the program? I'd like to. I'm still working on trying to find presenters for that, you know, for like a half an hour, an hour time span. Um, mm -hmm. I just received an email when we walked into the meeting this morning that there's a possibility of um, the bank here in town doing a money safety for seniors presentation during the expo. Mm -hmm. So. I will reach out and see if that, you know, give them a little bit more information of what the expo is. So hopefully. Could you put your list up again, please? Mm -hmm. Do we want, probably not, but Carver County Sheriff's, they've got um, a variety of programs. Um, what is the academy where people can get trained or, but that might not be appropriate, but they're, a good resource yeah the sheriff's office offers a lot of classes yes. that are really focused on kind of that adult protection okay. um so yeah we have reached out to them and i hope they will also participate okay are you going to have for speakers you're going to have the mayor do like a welcome do you think we can talk about doing some okay. sort of grand opening welcome uh, i think I, that I would think, be appropriate um i i think if you do that you might also want to reach out to commissioner workman because he's the commissioner who represents half of the district, and I think Commissioner Udeman represents the other half of Victoria. Five seems to be in the dividing line. Yes, we and, also have uh, representatives um, from the legislature, too. I yeah. think that's a fantastic idea. Great idea. I did reach out to the Alzheimer's Association about five or six years ago. They merged, Minnesota merged with um, North Dakota, so they're not as readily available. Um, I haven't heard back as far as um, if I, I, they, I do not think they have time to go to all these requests, but they're big on education. But I can try to request um, some information if we want it at our table, you know, as far as understanding Alzheimer's, things like that. That's um, a pretty big issue now. Patrick, look what I found. Mem memory oh, maker kit. There you go. And they have resource guides, so um, I can re reach out again to them, but I haven't heard back. Mm -hmm. Also, don't you think ARP should be there? I mean, they have so many programs that people can take advantage of. Just a representative from ARP with all their, all their brochures. Absolutely, and they d I have reached out, and they said they're not sure if they have the availability to be there or not, the AARP. Oh. Yep. Uh, they'll let me know by the end of the month. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm watching the time. We still have one item of business that kind of falls on from the fair, I think. So, my last suggestion. Yep. Um, you mentioned half hour presentations. Do you think it would be like to keep the presentations to like 15 minutes and kind of rotate them more? Would half hours, would people sit that much or? I was thinking more or less on the half an hour. Sorry. On the that half an hour. That's my mistake. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for all the work. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah. Nice job. I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be fantastic. Um, and then for just following up on uh, next steps, um, just continuously to reach out to vendors and trying to find presenters, um, looking for bags that we could give away um, as the City of Victoria, as the Senior Advisory Committee. Um, I have a meeting with Southwest uh, Transit um, later this week, and I'm going to see if they can offer some sort of giveaway. And then um, next meeting, that's September 13th at 9 a.m., um, determine if the committee would like to volunteer at the event and see if there's some duties assigned for that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Good job. Great. Thank okay. you. Let's move on to 6.5, the web page. Yeah, so we'll keep this one short just to allow you guys to get out of here at a great time or a good time. Um, as part of the expo, of course, is to launch the, the website and to launch the printable packet. Um, so we're 
almost done gathering all the resources for the packet. We've pretty much gathered all the resources for the website. So the next phase is, of course, just combining it all in one and getting it out there on the website. Um, there, if we get it done early, I don't think there's anything wrong with launching it early, but having that official launch um, in October. But just kind of as a topic headings for each of those for the website, we have general resources, um, we have finance, resources, health, home base and community, resources, housing, and then transportation. And then for that printable packet, and I'll go into these a little bit more detail, but um, you can see on the screen, we extended a little bit because we have a little bit more room to play with in a printable packet, um, going into caregiving support, uh, going into wellness and nutrition, lifelong learning, getting those community education programs up there, uh, going into medical supplies, equipment, things like that, and then obviously um, going into transportation, veterans, volunteering. So just a little bit on the general resources. Uh, we will have the senior linkage line. Um, just in my digging, as well as all of yours, the senior linkage line is one that comes up to the forefront in almost every single topic area. It seems to be a fantastic resource. And it's simple as just going onto a web page or calling, and they will get you connected with whoever you need to be connected with for your specific question or issue or or problem, um, and the, as well as the general resources, we'll put city resources in there, we'll add the post office's number and address in there, we'll get the sheriff's office, as well as some things that are like the AARP Community Resource Finder, it's just a great website that you put in your location, and then you say, this is what I want to do, and then they connect you up with, excuse me, <laughs> good thing that's empty, um, resources. And then there's caregiver's guide, and then minnesotahelp.info is another great overall resource. For finance resources, again, highlighting that linkage line, but there's also uh, social security, veterans benefits, um, MSA, health resources. Um, we have the state health insurance assistance program, which is part of the linkage line now. Uh, there's a lot of things on the AARP related to health. Uh, there's Medica, there's um, the National Alliance on Mental Health or Mental Illness, and then there's that Community Action Partnership. For the home base and community, as I said, linkage line is almost in every single category, <laughs> um, but there's also the CDA in Carver County, the CAP again. Um, Midwest Independent Living Services, there's the technology um, programs that you can find online as well. And then for housing, there's the CDA, there's Emerald Cross, there's Bethesda Cornerstone Village, and then some Housing Benefits 101 webpage that the state of Minnesota puts out. And then for transportation in the community, we have WeCab, Southwest Prime, as well as the uh, Veterans Linkage Line. And there's a few other ones. I didn't want to fill up all the screen on every single one that we have on there, but those are really the, the key ones we want to throw it on the website that people would be regularly accessing. And then if people want to take a deep dive or, again, they want that printed version, we will have a printable packet um, that people can request to print here. They can obviously request or print it at home or even using uh, the Victoria Library's printer on service um, downstairs. <laughs> Uh, they could dive a little bit more by going into general resources, the caregiving support, um, finance, and um, all the ones that are on the screen and I listed before. Yes. So, How do all the seniors become aware of all these things? Great question. So that's one of the reasons. One of the reasons that we're creating this printable packet and we're creating the website. Of course, with our communications manager, she's been fantastic at marketing. That's something that we'll make sure that we get out there. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing the expo is to say, here's the new web page. Um, please use it, and then we can have some printable packets already there um, that people can take home with them on that day. We'll get coverage. In Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is this is going to be terrific. Yeah. I like everything you've listed. Awesome, thank you. And if there's anything you'd like to change, obviously I'll send out the packet before we launch in October, so you guys can all see it and make comment and say, "Hey, I actually think we're missing something," or "This isn't maybe the best resource that we want to throw on here." Um, it will give you a chance to take a look. I'm having a hard time. At the next meeting, was it paid to be a mock-up or something to be operable? 
I'm not 100% sure if it will be on there by the next meeting. Yeah. However, um, as soon as it is in draft format, I can send you all photos and we'll do the same exercise on how does this look. I, I think it would be really valuable to walk through the website with all of you and really see is the text a great size? Is it easy to understand? Is it easy to know that you can click on these links and find the phone numbers you're interested in? I, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, I think it would be really a great exercise every year to go through and see um, if all the phone numbers are accurate. Um, in my digging and research of uh, senior resource packets that other organizations and other cities and other communities put out, it, it seems to be kind of an annual mm -hmm. exercise that people do and just make sure that everything, uh, all the links work, all the phone numbers work, etc. Uh, would we be able to see that um, printed packet before the the expo? Correct. There. Okay. Yep. Great. And then um, I had another question. What was it? <laughs> I don't know. I just lost it. Well, if you, I, I wanted to know if we could see that. Yeah, and they will be handed. Will they be handed out at the fair then? I think, yeah, that would be a great thing for yeah. us to do in our booth yeah, is to have nice printed ones. For that. Everybody, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And if you do remember your question or if any of you have any questions or thoughts or, hey, I found this great resource and want to share it with me, uh, um, please do. Send everything that you find my way. I, I love getting those emails and those uh, phone calls. So. We're down to other business. Anybody have any items of other business? Listen, do you have any other business from the staff? Chair, committee, I have no other business. Very mm. good. Is there somebody who would make a motion to adjourn the meeting then? I move we adjourn. Thank you, Nancy. Is there a second? I'll second. Ms. Jan, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same time. It carries. We're adjourned.